Hello and welcome to Forgotten Fronts, to the fourth episode in my Scourge of War Waterloo playthrough. In this episode, we'll be playing the mission Papalot, in which we assault the farmhouse on the Allied right flank. But now, the history. If you don't want to hear the history, a time will come up on the screen to see the mission. Wait for it. Now! In the beginning of the battle, the French paid little mind to the Nassars and Papalot, only sending in light cavalry and skirmishers to scout out and probe the defenses. However, during the build-up for the attack of Jalon's corps, on the right and center of the ridge, the farmhouse of Papalot gained significance as there was a risk of invalid fire on Jalon's corps, having no way to maneuver around it due to rough terrain to the east, and the woodland hamlet of La Haye had to assault it directly, and so the eight battalions of Durette's 4th Division were ordered to capture it, splitting up his division into two brigades sending the 1st Brigade under Pigot to guard the Grand Battery, whom began to bombard the ridge in preparation for Jalon's attack except for the rightmost guns, who began a 90-minute bombardment of Papelot, while the 2nd Brigade, commanded by Jean-Louis Bru, made the assault. His brigade, made up from battalions from both the 85th and 95th regiments of the line, was far smaller than those of Jean Bonaparte's division, numbering roughly 1,700 men, and Papelot would be a tough nut to crack, defended by two of the three battalions of the 2nd Orange Nassau Regiment. One of those brigades being sent to reinforce Hougamont was under the command of Prince Bernard of Saxe-Weimar. However, even without them, the regiment numbered 3,400 men. However, that wasn't all the difficulties the attackers faced. The fortified farmhouse was surrounded by sunken ancient roadways lined with hedgerows, making cavalry maneuver almost impossible and severely hindering artillery movement. The farmhouse was also supported by guns in the nearby ridge, which had an excellent field of fire to support them. The prince, taking advantage of his large numbers and defensive positions, spread out his brigade with four companies of the 1st Battalion around Frigimont, the two other companies in Smohain, and the Light Company and the 3rd Battalion of the 2nd, Garrison Papalot, as well as a nearby reserve. After the bombardment lifted, the assault began with French Voltigeur pushed back the Dutch flankers. Then the battalions of the 2nd Brigade were committed. Welcome back to those of you who didn't want to hear the history. Starting the mission, I immediately pause it to overlook the battlefield, and we see a large unit of Nassars by the farm that we need to take. Looking over to the east, we can see more Nassars by the hamlet. As my orders come in, I send my brigade forward in a single line. My plan was to wrap around the farmhouse in order to get my commander close enough to the victory point. But as my brigade moves forward, a courier comes in with our orders. Mon General, begin your attack on the village on the Allied right flank. If possible, capture and hold the farmhouse that the Allies occupy. Bon chance, General. While moving my brigade forward, I split off two skirmish companies in order to hold the flank. However, I made a mistake, splitting off a much larger skirmish company than I wanted to, severely hindering one of my units. But I only realized this mistake after the fact. I moved the skirmishers to regroup on the road to the northeast before telling them to move to intercept the Nassau units coming in, before moving in the rest of my brigade to attack the farmhouse. All the while, the nearby battery supports them. While one of the Nassau regiments stays behind, the other battalion rushes up to reinforce the garrison of Papalot, and so I move my skirmishers accordingly to intercept them. In the meantime, the rest of my battalions arrive to attack the farmhouse, but the other battalion is determined to get to the farmhouse, not stopping when I move up my skirmishers to fire upon them, and later on rushes across our firing line. In reaction to this, I move up my other battalions. We rush to France, but midway to the walls, we discovered the doors had been barricaded. We could not enter. We yelled to the garrison that we had come to reinforce them, and began to send troops over the walls. With the help of the garrison, the battalion got many men over the walls. But in the meantime, they took devastating fire from the French, particularly those covering those ascending the wall. But there goes the battalion rushing to the wall. But midway through, they stop and send their men over. But in doing so, they take the entire brigade's rope of fire into their flank, causing heavy casualties to them, but bravely they hold on when they send more of their fellows over the walls.
eventually I moved some of my skirmishers to fire into their rear to ever increase the casualties they are taking. But as the fire pit continues, the battalion takes heavy casualties, the entire company is melting away in little to no time at all. is going on, another battalion comes from the ridge to reinforce the farmhouse, and so I sent out a company of skirmishers to delay them from entering the farmhouse. As they form up and pick their targets, they take heavy fire from the farmhouse. And as they open fire, they inflict few casualties. In the meantime, however, the original reinforcing battalion broke. With that relief, I decided to move up a battalion to help our skirmishers to halt the reinforcements. Strangely enough, before they enter the farmhouse, these new reinforcements halt and turn around like a great green snake to open fire upon our men. In the meantime, I contemplate sending my other skirmish company to aid the forces attacking the farmhouse. But in the meantime, moving the camera to the west, I notice that the entirety of the 1st Brigade has been committed to our support. However, before they arrive in force, the Nassau Brigade move in to attack us. We rushed forward to attack the French before their reinforcements arrived in force. However, the orders came too late, and the entire rest of the division fell upon us. The battalion of Nassau has moved forward and they were under fire of only one of our battalions and skirmishers before the rest of the 1st Brigade arrives, forming a massive line in front of us, threatening to wipe out the one battalion we move forward. I suspect the closest regiment of line to them, from the farmhouse to them. Seeing that the German reinforcements haven't moved in, I decide to move my skirmishers to support the attack, rushing them to the same firing line as my other skirmishers. But in the meantime, the Nassau Reserve forms a line, threatening to attack our flank, and so I have to move our skirmishers back. firefight between the counter-attacking Nassauers and the two brigades is, is proving bloody for the Germans, as our casualties mount steadily, all the while the prince is driven to support his men. And just behind him in the fortress I see a secret reserve, who is not inside the fortress itself, but can move in at any moment to support them, all the while the casualties on that one Nassau battalion are racking up. But then, the reserves move in, so I desperately move in our skirmishers to stop them. Voltager, form a skirmish line and fire on your own time. That battalion cannot be allowed to pass, or the entire attack will be in jeopardy. The whole offensive lies on our shoulders, man. As the mass hours advance, we pick them off, aiming for their higher ranks as officers and sergeants to make them lose cohesion in order to, for them to stop their advance. But noticing this fire is too little to stop their advance, I move in my other skirmish company to support them. As they advance, they come under fire from the garrison from the farmhouse. The Nassau is being kind enough to advance in column give our skirmishers hardly any chance to miss. But the way the column will not be broken by my skirmishers alone, 
and their advance continues. Meanwhile, to the southwest, the Nassar is making a counterattack, but losing cohesion as the firepower becomes too much. One of our regiments seeing this becomes overconfident and decides to charge. All of our men, those turtles are falling back. Let's show them how the Emperor feels about treasures. Men are reformed. Now, fire, charge. It's a trap. We surrender. Our men go charging towards a larger regiment of Nassar thinking that they would break immediately as the charge is connected, and it appears they're already falling back, as an upstander is falling back towards the victory point, and our men carry on, supported by more skirmishes on their flank. But then, as soon as they get close, they counter charge, and our men get absolutely shredded The melee doesn't continue for long and our men retreat, soon after surrendering as they are overwhelmed, and the counter charge being led by the prince himself. Going over to the east, our skirmishers are doing much better, as the Nassarists have formed into line and are pouring devastating fire into them. Then going back to the west, the Nassars form line once again after their successful fate. However, as they do so, they sustain devastating casualties as our men avenge the lost battalion. with the rest of the 2nd Brigade, as to not have them be singled out by the Nassau Regiment and destroyed. Moving back over to the east, the skirmishers have appeared to have broken, while the larger skirmish company appears to hold the line desperately, no sustaining heavy casualties. Going back over to the west, I reformed one of my regiments to fire directly into the flank of the Nassauers. By now I'm realizing that one of the skirmish companies have broken and have decided to open the map to see if they reformed anywhere, but alas, they have not. Then the Nassars attempt to do the same feint once again, beginning to loot, fall back and lose cohesion, drawing in one of the members of the 2nd Brigade. Then another French battalion, Philip is a bit, charges the regiment outside the walls, and as this time is different, they came in like a tiger over the net, then broke into a mainstream of steel and wood, a battalion escaped, however there are a few survivors. However, this regiment charged directly onto their flank. The rage of losing one of the battalions, they fight back like furies. Pushing back the Nassar to the farmhouse. The prince moving up to rally them is too late and has to withdraw as well, rushing back to the ridge to ask for support. to the east, our skirmishers have taken such severe casualties and decided to move them back to their parent battalion, decided to reform my, my entire brigade onto the southern road, while the 2nd brigade attacks the chateau. Except for the leftmost battalion, which I had told to attack the farmhouse. I 
noticing that their flank was exposed, I decided to move up the other regiment to cover their flank, as well as looking for my third regiment, which is in the fray with the 2nd Brigade, to move up and support the rest of my brigade. And as the Nassau Battalion advances, I move them up at the double as they are needing urgently. The 1 Battalion kills a few casualties as they move up into line. as soon as my new battalion arrives, the Nassars fire a huge volley, most of it hitting me, and thus began a huge firefight between my brigade and their single battalion, where both sides will fire like men possessed in a last desperate firefight, which will decide the fate of the farmhouse. Seeing the writing on the wall on how big their battalion is, I decide to send my final battalion, which was attacking the farm, to join the firefight. The Nassar Brigade, before doing what I like to call the Iron Gate flip-flop, which is when the unit can't decide which unit to target, and so it flips back and forth between the targets that is given, before forming column and advancing, taking quite a few casualties before it stops and forms line again. Intimidated by this large block of men, my son of brigade begins to fall back, but I tell them to hold their position. slug match I've just entered into. I look on the map to see if there's any more units I can bring forward. Seeing one, I go back to look for it. But it turns out it's only one of the skirmish companies that I had from the beginning of the game. And so I send it just behind his parent battalion before I tell him to rejoin me. As I rush there, the center company begins to fall back once again, and I again tell them to hold their ground. But due to my horrible command, my points are already in the negative hundreds. This firefight not helping matters, as it's very costly to my brigade. As the firefight carries on, the Nassauers continue flipping and flopping back between targets, while the Prince stands off to the side rallying his men, and the 1st Brigade carries on assaulting the walls, to no effect. As the firefight carries on, the leftmost battalion takes fire from the farmhouse.
the permits of the cavalry, thinking to myself, only one squad, one squad that would make the difference in this battle. If I could have one squad of cavalry, I could push back that regiment, and then carrying on and taking the farmhouse, and eventually capture it, but to no avail, as they're not only my command. And so the firefight carries on, and the casualties rise on both sides. The Nassau regiment flipping back and forth between the two front battalions, evenly cutting down even more troops from both. The prince being called forth to rally his troops, he was called to the back to, for something more important. Desperately check them out for any more reinforcements that I can possibly bring out. Then the rightmost battalion breaks and flees to the rear, and I don't know why, as they show no sign of retreating beforehand. And so I reposition the center battalion in order to put more fire down on the mass hours, as the prince returns to rally his men once again. Checking over to the walls of Papalot, the 2nd Brigade has made an assault on the walls but is pushed back as casualties mount to a horrific number. Returning to our firefight, we can notice the mass out in the center is nearly broken entirely, as the center of their front rank is nearly entirely destroyed. the second brigade, they're moving up another battalion to attack the walls. Then the Nassars flip again, focusing their fire on the center of the battalion. The battalion that threatened to withdraw several times, which made me extremely worried. But now in retrospect, I noticed something that I didn't notice in the battle. That the golden number, which I presume means ammunition, was running quite low, which might have been a cause for my troops to withdraw. As the fire pit continues, the Nassars flip again, as the Prince returns to rally them once again. And going back to the assault of the farmhouse, you can see just like at Hougamal, that the farmhouse has caught fire due to the cannon fire. I guess one of the amusing things is for this, is that every single time the Prince returns, they focus fire on the center battalion. And then every time he leaves, they go back to focusing on the leftmost battalion. Then they go again. As soon as he turns his back, they focus on the leftmost battalion. 
In the meantime, our, second our center of battalion breaks. However, they're not going to get very far before they reform. Just out of the, out of the firing line of the, out of the mass hours. And so I pull back my final battalion. So in theory, I can have the support of the other brigade. Then I pull by a blue since he's too proud to withdraw on his own. Once my brigade is in line with the other brigade, the center battalion reforms, and I attempt to hold the flank once again. As the prince goes to oversee his men once again, the battalion splits off a company of skirmishers and they prepare to attack. In the background, the 2nd Brigade is making another fruitless assault against the farmhouse, being pushed back with heavy casualties. Taking flanking fire from the farmhouse, I move one of my battalions to support the 2nd Brigade in this attack. But then the Nassars move up, sending out their skirmishers first, and so I quickly move them back to support the rest of the brigade. And so I send the left battalion to attack the skirmishers. But they immediately break. And no wonder why. The gold number is zero. They have absolutely no ammunition. Now our flank is entirely open to the assault of the Nassauers. And under the cover of skirmishers, they move up in column formation. And you notice how small the battalion is after the huge firefight we had earlier. And now we only have one final battalion, low on ammunition, in order to hold the flank or the entire attack will fall. In a panic, I try to find the ammunition wagon, and it's nowhere to be found. And so as soon as my troops return from falling back in a panic, I tell them to go get more ammunition, and I notice where it is at last. And the final battalion has to hold the flank by itself, when suddenly canister fire erupts into the flank of the Nassauers, causing devastating casualties as invalid fire. In the meantime, their skirmishers move up, harassing our smaller, harassing the rest of the brigade. However, they're only a small unit, so they will not cause much damage. desperately back and forth for that one battalion to come back to the fray, as the other battalion has precious little ammunition to spare. In the meantime, the 2nd Brigade is moving out for an assault with the final battalion on my flank leaving my battalion completely exposed, not to mention that the rest of his brigade is entirely destroyed. However, the canister fire has done its work, and the rest of the Nassars have fallen back. While in the meantime, my battalion has finally reached the ammunition wagon and will finally replenish its ammunition. All my men attack the skirmishers, the final battalion of the 2nd Brigade, taking heavy cannon fire. At this point, I am entirely mentally exhausted and flabbergasted about it, and lose the entire brigade to what looks like a simple objective. And so I try to tell my battalion to charge without noticing that their fatigue is very low. And so they break almost immediately. But luckily they'll regroup quite quickly.
and my other battalion has ammunition, so it will advance shortly. However, all the while, the final battalion of the other brigade is taking flanking fire from the skirmishers, as well as fire from the farmhouse. As soon as my brigade regroups, I tell them to go get ammunition, confident that the final battalion of the other brigade will stand. But under the flanking fire, artillery fire, and fire from the farmhouse, they begin to withdraw. And so, it's a major defeat. But I like to think of it as a draw as the casualties are horrific on both sides, but I guess it's a strategic victory for the Nassauers, as the Nassauers hold the farmhouse, and so this fiasco comes to an end. If you want to see how to play this mission properly, I'd recommend Dark Rob's channel, because they're a far more talented player than me, who's put a lot more hours into this game. But now for another episode of Adventures in Time! God, I hope I don't have to do this. Yeah, it's too damn quiet for a battle. Perhaps I missed it. Oh, Christ, that means I ought to go back. And with this rain, the chair will be ruined. Horses? Perhaps it's the French. Better make myself look scarce. Better get those damn supplies and recall the machine. What was that noise? It's a gust of wind. You landed well. far too jumpy. Thank God, it's the Prussians. Looks like light cavalry. If I follow them, they'll send me back to the main column. Well, looks like a long walk it is then. These Britons wouldn't know how to make a comfortable uniform to save their lives. How good. Prussian cavalry can patrol. They're too in a shape for all this. Halt! Who goes there? Friend, advance friend and be recognized. Who are you then? I'm a messenger from Wellington's army. You don't sound like a typical Englishman. I'm from British North America. And why are you dressed as an officer? I'm one of Grant's exploring officers. I have, a, I have an urgent message for General Blucher. All right, you will come with us to the 4th Corps HQ to see General Von Bülow.